when I was working on the latest edition of my textbook in 2001, I was struck by the fact that there were really no good examples of climate change, the effects of climate change, anywhere from the eastern United States. The examples were all very far away, like polar bears in Canada or wildflowers in the Swiss Alps. So beginning in 2002 with my students, we started to look for the effects of climate change. We have found that there's a wealth of information about how warming temperatures is affecting the flowering time of plants, the leafing out time of trees and shrubs, and the arrival of birds in the spring. Six months after we started our project, a former BU graduate student in philosophy told us about Thoreau's records. In the 1850s, he made very detailed observations in Concord about when plants flowered and when they were leafing out and also when birds arrived in the spring. We we're studying the same species that Thoreau studied and by comparing his observations of leafing out with when these species are leafing out today in Concord, we can see the effects of climate change. We start to come to Concord towards the end of March, beginning of April. We're looking for the first individual of that species to leaf out. The white pine, which is an evergreen species, has still not leafed out. We still have these very small buds where the leaves are just coming out. Leafing out time is very important because it changes a lot of variables in the spring. So when leaves come out, it's when a plant starts photosynthesizing and when nutrients are used up from the soil. Also. Leaves are an important food source for many insects, which can be in turn a food source for bird species. And changing the time of those leaf availability can really alter the presence of other species that depend on them. The leaf out is occurring on average about 17 days earlier now than it was during Thoreau's time. The flowering time is about anywhere from about 10 days to about two weeks that the plants are now flowering earlier than in Thoreau's time. We find that certain species of plants in particular are not able to respond to this changing climate and are going extinct. One quarter of the wildflower species which were present in Concord 150 years ago and the Thoreau would have seen aren't present here anymore. And another one third of them are now very rare and are probably likely to go extinct within the next few decades. 107 centimeters? Okay. 52, 53, 54, 55. 55. I've been doing much field work at the base site, Boston Area Climate Experiment. The base site provides us with kind of an on-the-ground experimental way of demonstrating how those different temperatures actually affect flowering and leafing out on the ground in a very controlled experimental setup. So we have all these different combinations of either not changing the temperature or increasing the temperature by different amounts and either keeping the normal amount of rainfall or decreasing it by 50% or increasing it by 50%. And so this is an unheated plot right here. We can see that the milkweeds are growing up, but they're not really finishing their life cycle quite yet. They're not flowering yet. We have a lot of flower buds in, in close. And then from here, we'll go to a heated plot. This is actually a six degree centigrade increase plot. So it's about almost you know, nine or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And this plant is in full flower here. It's actually warmer, dramatically warmer because of the heaters here. And that's just stimulated these plants to just grow much faster. So how many plots had dandelions on them? I think this year was like more like 15 and last year was more like 20. Pretty big difference between the two years. Yeah. I started working last year with the group from the geography department to get a different perspective on leafing out. And we asked them if they were interested in working with us of comparing when plants are leafing out using remote sensing with what we're observing on the ground. And they were very interested in doing this as well. They can give us the leafing out times in Concord over the last 11 years using remote sensing. Each one of these different approaches that we have, remote sensing, historical information, and then this work from the Boston Area Climate Experiment, also gives us different ways of estimating how climate change will be affecting the leafing out time of the forest and the ability of forests to begin photosizing in the spring. And what we really want to come out of this with is a very clear idea of how comparable these three methods are. And this will result in much more accurate models being created of how climate change will be affecting forest growth in this region and the ability of the forest to absorb carbon dioxide. If Thoreau could return to Concord today, I'm sure he would be pleased to learn how important his notebooks have been to the study of climate change. <laughs>